Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to talk about setting up your C Sharp environment and using the Google Cloud Platform. And you can use a free trial from Google to go ahead and set this up. So let's go ahead and go through the details of how you can get set up and get started with the labs for this course. Okay, the process is really straightforward to get up and going with this, and that's why I like developing code in the cloud. So the first step is to sign up for a free account, which you'll actually get as a $300 credit from Google. And once that credit is gone, then they'll start charging you for it. But the use of the console that we're going to be using is free. So you won't get charged for that. So you're, you can spend your $300 credit on something else. So you open up the console after you create your, your free account and you log in. So you'll open up the console and we'll create our first program. And then we'll use the built-in editor in the Google Cloud Platform to make changes, and we'll complete our first program. And this will be our baseline program for the rest of the lessons in this course. Now, whether you use the Google Cloud Platform or you use a Windows PC, the code will be identical. And in the book, in the course guide book, it'll show you the different commands you need to copy the file. So that'll really be the only difference is the editor that you'll use and how you copy the files, but the code will be exactly the same because we're going to use .NET Core in both of those. So let's go ahead and jump on to the browser and I'll show you how to sign up for the account and get started. So I've got a split screen window set up on the left hand side is our course guide with the instructions on the right hand side is a browser. So the first step is you'll go out to cloud.google.com slash free and you can look at the details of the free account. It's 12 months. You'll get a $300 free credit to start with GCP. And then there's also a number of always free products that you can sign up for as well. So just follow the links and sign up for here. It will ask you for a credit card. All these cloud accounts really require a credit card to get started off, but you won't be charged anything. And the, as a matter of fact, they won't, when you hit that $300 credit, it will stop your account and it will ask you to actually enroll for the uh, paid account. So they have the credit card on file just so they know who you are. So once you do that, then we'll go ahead and scroll down to the next instruction here. And this is just more about the free tiers. You'll go out to cloud.google.com and, and we'll go ahead and log in. So we'll do that. We'll go to cloud.google.com and I'll get, go ahead and log in. Well, I'm already logged in with my my Destin learning account and once you get there then you'll click go to the console so we'll go ahead and do that and we'll go to the console wants me to authenticate here real quick so let's just do that so now I'm at the Google console so let's go ahead and look at the next step. The next step is to open up the cloud shell. And this is what we'll be using exclusively in this class if you want to use the Google Cloud Platform to develop. And it's on the upper right hand menu and you just activate the cloud shell by clicking this button right here. Notice that as I'm mousing over it says activate cloud shell. So I'll go ahead and do that. It'll take just a second here. I haven't used the cloud shell for a little bit, so it takes some time to actually start up the machine. So this is actually a Linux virtual machine that has five gigabytes of storage, and this is free to use. You don't get charged for the time with the cloud shell account, and it has all of the Google software pre-installed on it, including the .NET uh, core framework. So there we go. We're at the Google Cloud Platform. So now we can actually go about setting up for our lab environment. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next step now. So I recommend that you also follow this same approach that you have the PDF file on screen with you while you're working through the exercises. That way you can actually copy and paste code or commands from, from the command line. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate this here so I can move this over here. And I mentioned that the .NET Core framework is already installed. You can verify this then by copying and pasting that command, which is .NET slash slash version. And so it's 2.1.4. And it really doesn't matter what version of .NET Core is. Since this is an introduction to C Sharp, all of the C Sharp commands will run under any version of .NET Core. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. We've verified that .NET Core is in place. So now we're going to create a new directory 
called CS code and we'll change to that directory. So once again, I can copy and paste this if I like, or I could type it in by hand. It doesn't really matter. And if I want to verify that I've changed my working directory, I've just typed in PWD, which is for print working directory. So in order to navigate around, I'll put out a separate lesson on this to navigate around the Linux command line in case you're not familiar. But I can, I can change my directory to the directory above by typing cd dot dot. And I can change my directory back to my CS code directory with the following command. So I'm in the right command now. So let's go ahead and create our first .NET Core program. So we'll look at on the left hand side, use the command .NET new, and you specify what you want .NET to create. In this case, we're going to create a console program. We talked about that in an earlier lesson. And we're going to give it a name of chapter four, since that's the name of this chapter. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste that once again over here. And it'll take just a few seconds, but now the .NET Core framework will go out and create our program. So there we go. We already have a program created right now, and it's created it in a directory called CH4. And if I do a directory listing of that, you will see that there's uh, some C Sharp code in there. There's an object directory, and there's also a C Sharp project file. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So let's go ahead and look at the next step. We look at our course guide, and the next step is to launch the code editor. And there's an icon for that that's on the just above the console program. So here it is right here. So we'll go ahead and click on this, and this will actually launch a separate window that has both the command processor in it and an editor. So I'll go ahead and click on this and notice now that it's going to launch a, a different instance of the cloud shell with the shell at the bottom and we're going to go ahead and see the editor over here on the left hand side. It takes just a second to bring this up and there we go. Here's, here's our editor over here. So let me go ahead and resize this window back so that we can have our instructions over here. And if I look at my CS code directory, I can go down and look at our program here. So here's our chapter four subdirectory that I'm highlighting here. And now here is our, our, our program. So here's our first part of C sharp code. So there's a using statement at the top and that defines what modules are imported for this and system is the standard one. There's a namespace that defines the naming constructs for this program and by default when you create a program like we did it creates a namespace with the same name as the program which is chapter four. And C sharp is an object oriented programming language. So we'll talk more about that later in this class, but it creates a one class that has a standard entry point and that standard entry point is main. In addition, you can pass command line arguments to it, but we don't have to worry about that. The main comp the main statement we're going to look at right now is this console.write line statement. So we're going to make a small change to this and add my name is Eric. Put the next exclamation point back if you want. Add whatever you want in here. The idea is just to make a simple change to this and you can save this program out of this window. So now let's go ahead and scroll on down. So we've, we've found our file, we've done that step, and we've made a small change in, in the code. So we opened it in the editor, we updated the code, and I put in the change. So now we're actually going to run the program. Now, Google's really good about saving things, so even though I hit the, the File Save button there, it changes things uh, for that it, in, in any case anyway, so you don't really have to forcefully save it. it. It will do it on its own. So now that we've saved the program, we're going to actually run this. We'll type in the command .NET run, or you can copy and paste it. And it takes just a second because this command is actually compiling the code and executing it. So there we go. There's the output from our first C-sharp program. 
So that's really it. That's our first Hello World program. And now, after this, we're going to make copies of this particular Chapter 4 lab, and we'll build on that step-by-step step through the remaining 20 or so lessons in this course, and we'll look at different aspects of C-sharp code step-by-step. Step. So you don't have to install any software. You can get up and running with this. It's quick and easy to log in over the cloud, and you can launch the cloud shell, knock out a few lessons at a time, and really work on this until you go through all the lessons. And by that time, you'll have a really good handle on all the aspects of creating C sharp program, C sharp console programs, and all the language elements of C sharp. So that's really it for this lesson. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, you can sign up for this class for free on Skillshare. I've put the link here, and I'll also include the link in the video description. You can download, once you sign up for the class at Skillshare, you can download the course guide that has all the lessons for this course, and you can see all the videos out there as well. So that's it. Thanks again. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.